today from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. This is Matt NFL 21 on EA Sports. We'll see Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Jared Goff and the Los Angeles Rams. It's an Indian summer afternoon. Perfect conditions for football, and off we go on EA Sports. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. On the, return, the Rams take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. who played his college ball in Tallahassee. Here's Cam Akers. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. It's Ross Cockrell that time that made the tackle. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. the 27-yard line. A throw out wide to Woods complete. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in second. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And sometimes you see big plays develop on a route like this, a slant route. And the object, very simple. Get the ball to your receiver in stride. This one was right on the money. He didn't miss a beat. And then it's off to the races. And there he goes. And his top speed, as computed by Next Gen Stats, not bad. He was pushing 20 miles an hour. Run on first down with Akers. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And they'll go jet sweep to try to pick it up. He can't get him down. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league, no question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. Try a little trickery here on the end around. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Offense. Don't walk out here, man. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we've got about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Now it's gone off the bootleg. 
And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. to Akers. Here's Goff. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll run for it with Akers. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. Sean McVay's gamble does not pay off. And this crowd loves it as their guys hold on the opening drive. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. We're scoreless after one. With no score. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target, and he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And Jones is not going to have the first down as they stop him short. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on fourth, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. He trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Well, we'll see what his offense can do. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Shotgun snap for Goff. Well, that'll be caught by Cup. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. A second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Throwing again is gone. A quick pass to Cup. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Goff throwing again. And that one 
goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. Ted took his attention elsewhere to no avail. the handoff. Now go off. Man open. It's Cup. He's got it. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they hit the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. Again, golf. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. And he's going to have the first down as they move into field goal range here at the 25-yard line. It's a gain of 20 as we wind down near 20 seconds left in the quarter. That's into the hands of Akers complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Call it a gain of five. And that'll make this a second down. Brings up second and five. To the air again. Gone for the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. There's gone. Complete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. It'll be from the right hash and it'll be a 36 yarder. And Gay knocks this one through. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3 0. Now the drive ends in just three, but they'll take it. Looks like they'll head to the locker room barring something unfortunate in front on the scoreboard. Yeah, they may not be jumping up and down and celebrating because they have the lead, but still, any little momentum in a game like this is important to a team, and they'll feel real good about going in and regrouping, knowing that they are out in front. From the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Bucs take over first and 10. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Well, they'll get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. They're always trying to cool off a big-time guy throwing the ball, but you have to know when to back off, pull off, and not hit him. There's the penalty. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. An abbreviated halftime show as we get rolling to quarter three. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And maybe time for this offense to really hit the reset button. They were shut out in the first half, but still, they're right in this game. They certainly are. What I like about it is that you actually continue to play. You know, you just find a way to make a few plays yourself, and you noted it. Right there on the border in this game, they're not that far off. Just got to find a play or two, and they could be very happy at that point. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. He's going deep for Brown. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field. The play, they say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten.
And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. At the 30 yard line. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two. From the 30 on second down. Golf. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So after the INT, it's Brady to Evans on the slant. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Yeah, this is going to be a Bucks first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. I think they like this drive a little bit better there. Probably the running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and ten. Fournette running out of the gun. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And his pass incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll try and run for it with Jones. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. They end up getting stumped twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. L.A. readies for its next possession. And, Charles, we've seen almost three full quarters now, and neither offense can really get it going. Neither has hit the end zone, and neither side seemingly can make that big play. But the game hasn't been devoid of action because these two defenses, they've taken over and they've slugged it out. But I think you're exactly right. We're at that stage of the game now where one of these offenses, if they make a big play, that could be the difference. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. 
And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Jason Pierre-Paul able to get him for a loss of about three. Pressure can drop him all over when they're plotting a defensive strategy. And that particular play just came from the outside. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. Out of the gun. Gone. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Brady. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in, and he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That one good for a first down oh, yeah. pickup of 18 yards. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mucked that down for a win in the defense's column. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. But people talk about plays being blown up. That's exactly what they're talking about. That's exhibit A for physical play. Throwing is Brady on third down. A quick pass here to Godwin. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Brady finding Godwin there for Buccaneer first. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. This will be caught at about the 5. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They go back to the ground with Jones. And the Rams defense gets to him again behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up a third down. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That's not exactly what you want there, especially given the time on the clock. But now, you've got to kick the field goal, right? You do, and actually, you show a little faith in your defense when you do that because you kick the field goal here. You're telling them, we believe you'll get the ball back for us for one more shot. This hasn't exactly been a battle of one touchdown after the other, quite the opposite. But at 3-3 now here in the fourth, it's been an entertaining game considering just two field goals. Yeah, is it really a football game now or are we watching baseball? This feels like a pitcher's duel, doesn't it? Nice and tense on the edge of your seat. Have you been scoring this one? A lot of, a lot of strikeouts and ground balls in this one. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They need to get this around the 40 to have a chance to win it in regulation. From the 40, it's a 57-yard field goal, so that gives you a gauge. And all they're trying to do now is pick up yardage in good chunks and get out of bounds to stop the clock. If they end up running a play and get tackled in bounds, they're worried the clock may run out on them and finish the game. Yeah, they'll have to be careful how they handle this. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down.
Now it's gone. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. He's going to fire one deep over. This is caught inside the 15. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Well, now they'll try the end around. Able to fight through one tackle. And he'll be out of bounds. Had the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Missed tackles may doom this team. I just had a bad flashback. That's why I'm sitting up here with you right now. You've got to tackle him inbounds. You've got to wrap him up. game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. Glock going to keep it himself. And he's across for the touchdown. And in the final minute, that should just about seal it. Well, any thoughts about overtime that ended at this juncture? That touchdown puts them up six. I would imagine they'll kick the extra point now and rely on their defense. Yeah, rely on their defense. So a little bit of time left on the clock here in the fourth, but they got to feel good now. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is now 10-3. to three. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. So here's Brady and the Bucks trailing 10 to 3. 30 seconds to go. Needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and 10. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Now Brady. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver, and it's third and five. Complete. 12 seconds left. Gronkowski incomplete. Sets up fourth down. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Brady. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. And they'll let Cup run on the end around. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football. Low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.